Okay, we're back. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're talking about Coronaville, what's next and what's more. Uh, with Tim Apicella, uh, Cynthia Sinclair, Winston Welch. Um, on a given Thursday, which we always do. So come around on Thursday at 11 and you'll see us. In fact, if you come around on Wednesday at 11, you'll see uh, Tim and uh, Trump Week. We like to cover this subject because it will guide us our future. Um, it'll hand us our future, I should say. So before the show began, Winston said, Jay, is something preoccupying you? And um, I'm digging deep in my own consciousness to find what is preoccupying me. And what is preoccupying me is I don't like what's going on. Trump is making an absurd campaign. He's campaigning 2016 all over again, as if the whole four years was lost. And he's saying, you know, think about it. The red hats make America great again. Wait a minute, um, does that skip the four years? What America is he talking about? Is this the America he was talking about in 20? How, where has he been for, for four years? Well, I'll tell you where he's been. He's been doing destruction and damage to our country, to every aspect of our country. He is not fit. And the problem is there's still a lot of people who think he is fit. And that, that you know, we've been talking about that, guys and girls, for years. And I don't think we fully understand yet um, why anyone would support this guy. He's a jerk, he's mean, he's incompetent, and yet he's the president, you know, setting the guidelines of our lives to come for years and years. And so he, here we are engaged in a great campaign where he's doing his reality show and Biden is being a gentleman, if you will. Um, and at, at the end of the day, it's not clear that Biden will win, polls or no polls. Um, and, and of course, the background, the backdrop for all this is coronavirus which is killing hundreds of thousands of people. And Trump denies it completely as he has from the outset. It's again, the reality show, the alternate, alternate universe. And so I guess I, guess I wanna ask, uh, that's my feeling and I'm not happy. Um, I'm not happy because I know he's got tricks up his sleeve and he's destroying our country and, and he may succeed. Um, Tim, wh what do you think? I mean, coronavirus is killing a lot of people. He's ignoring it. He's making it going go away with shiny objects from every direction. Um, is this madness? Yes, it is madness. Good morning, Jay. Um, it's, it's what we've been talking about for years is his distraction. And as we've said many times before that he, he made a decision not to address it as a serious virus that could kill 215,000 Americans. Um, he basically just forged through it, uh, didn't want to disrupt the Dow, didn't want to disrupt the NASDAQ or the standards and pours. He just needed his economy to keep chugging along so that he could be reelected. Re his filter is reelection. Uh, if you remember four years ago, uh, basically two days after he is elected, he's holding rallies for reelection. So reelection has been on his mind since the day he was elected. And, um, coronavirus or not, it's not going to get in the way of my reelection. And so that's how he's treated it. Uh, so yeah, it is madness. Who, who thinks like that? Well, it's a demagogue, you know, and in the end, you belong the classic demagogue. Uh, I think somebody came and took him out or something. He, he, they, you know, he said, they said about him, you can fool some of the people some of the time and all of the, you can fool some of the people all the time and some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Well, he's, I think he's fooling enough people here. And maybe, um, you know, there's, there's something coming down the pike where people will realize this. You know, I, 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 I vacillate, I, I have a sign curve where sometimes I feel that people understand he's a demagogue and some days I feel they don't. Uh, so, uh, uh, Cynthia, what, your feelings on this, please. Well, I don't think it's just him involved in keeping people in his camp. We've got to remember that Russia is also involved in this misinformation campaign that's been going on. And his number one tool is projection. So he's always pointing his fingers at other people when in reality, it's the thing that he's doing himself. Just to try to muddy the waters and confuse people. And knowing as many people as I do in the South, they're falling for it. Yeah. Okay, Winston, uh, why don't you try to be pessimistic for a minute? <laughs> Born pessimist, yeah, go ahead. 
I, it's the question. Tell me the question again. What do you how, do you feel, how do you feel about what's going on here? We're uh, not quite three weeks out, um, and there's all these strange things happening, and uh, Trump has all these tricks up his sleeve. The Republican Party is acting like they can cheat at this football game. Um, it's a reality show that, that, that has entertained us. My theory is maybe we're getting tired of being entertained, but the, but, but the base and the tricks are still there. They, they are there and they're going to continue and they're going to continue during the election and after the election. Uh, and they're going to continue after uh, Joe Biden is sworn in as president. This is, it's not going to go anywhere, but he can, uh, when he gets in, it will help to normalize things, I think. And when we have a calm, sane, rational adult in the office, it will make a difference. And I think the tide has turned. We can't be complacent. We can't decide, oh, that's great. Because as Joe Biden's uh, even campaign chair said today, uh, she said that the election is much closer than we imagine it is. And I think that that's true, but we still have to uh, account for the fact that there's 40% of the people that do support Donald Trump. And I think it's more helpful to, to understand why do they support him? Because, well, we might think it's, it's hypnosis or it's Fox News and um, those may, they may play into it. There's new studies out that, that uh, point to this as to um, why uh, the uh, Washington Post, and I, I mentioned it yesterday, has a research on uh, exploring the authoritarian mindset of Trump's core supporters. I think it's interesting to read that and understand why are people supporting this? And it just may be in their makeup. And there's a lot of other, um, you know, there's some positive news out there too, that, that uh, people are changing. They're waking up, they're saying, we, can't, we cannot have four more years. We can't have four more months of this. And, and they're making a change and they're, they're, they're moving in the swing states, they're moving in the entire nation. And I think there's just been that change that's somehow taken place. So I'm remaining optimistic. Right oh, now. So I'm, I'm not convinced, you know, one of the things that Trump did when he was in real estate in New York, Tim, was uh, he fooled the press. He would call and pretend to be somebody else. He would, he would try to create his own universe of fact. I mean, he was doing this kind of thing a long time ago, um, fooling people, fooling the press. Um, and, you know, he's been doing that. He understands the news cycle. He understands that if you throw shiny object, they forget what happened just a few days ago. And you could, you know, you could make a list of the outrage points that he is uh, engaged in, you know, calling the military suckers. Uh, gee whiz, I mean, there's so many of them, I, we, we don't have time. Um, but, you know, what I'm thinking is that, is that people forget and that, how about this one? Even the coronavirus is not a significant feature in what's going to happen here because he's able to put a damper on that. He's able to throw shiny objects to distract us. And if you thought, you know, he's been doing that up till this point, wait, give it two or three weeks. I guarantee it'll be the, the tail that wagged the dog, Dustin Hoffman. Uh, it'll be something to distract the whole country. And at the end of the day, you know, we all agree that the coronavirus is the biggest issue in this administration, the biggest failure. And yet somehow in my heart of hearts, I don't think it's going to have that much effect. What do you think? I think it already has have had an effect. I think Donald Trump is losing the 65 plus crowd. Um, I think they are directly affected by the coronavirus. They feel the impacts of being shuttered in. They're scared and they're not getting any sense from Donald Trump that uh, he's concerned about their welfare. And I think those, those impacts have already set into the mindset of, of the 65 plus crowd. And the polls are reflecting that by 20 points, Joe, um, uh, he, uh, Joe Biden is pulled ahead of Trump. So it is working now. There is something called overexposure to information. Uh, you know, we've been talking about coronavirus since March. And here we are in mid-October. And uh, there's an old saying back in World War II that because it was being reported on it each and every day, um, morning, noon, and night, um, younger, younger generations said the war's a bore. This was a war that was fighting for the freedom of the world. And um, monikers like the wars of war uh, started to crop up because it's information overload, information burnout. And I think that's part of the issue with corona, coronavirus. And Donald Trump is playing that pretty well. He's trying to um, just pass it off as a, a common flu. Uh, we know it's not, but that's what he's trying to do. So there we are. Yeah. 
Well, it's not only it's not only coronavirus. Think of think of uh, the CARES Act uh, maneuvering in Congress. That's disgusting. Think of the uh, impeachment. That's disgusting. Think of immigration. That's disgusting. Think of the uh, in the protection of the environment. That's disgusting. I, I could go on, Cynthia, but you know, a lot of these things have been like forgotten. They're no longer in the public mind. We have been shown shiny objects uh, on, a, on a now basis, and we forget all these horrendous things that he's done and not done. Are these things going to have an effect in the election? I, I don't think so, no. Um, the people that are in his camp are very well set in guns, abortion, and guns, <laughs> right? <laughs> and abortion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they don't care about the rest of it. They don't care about the corona. They think it's a hoax anyway. The people that understand all these things, we understand it. So I don't think that that the majority of us are, are feeling, I mean, we all feel the burnout, but I don't think it's making us close our eyes to it. Whereas I think his supporters are so entrenched in the guns, abortion, guns, abortion, that they don't care about anything else. And they've so fallen for this, it's a hoax, it's nothing. And if you think about his illness, his positive case, should it come at a convenient time for him? Um, because right at a time when he was tanking about this whole coronavirus thing, he suddenly comes up with it, then what? Four days later, he's cured of it. And so I still kind of have some suspicions to whether or not he was even sick. I really well, he's capitalizing on, on, on his success in any event. He's he telling everybody that, you know, it's no big thing and uh, he got over it. And <clears throat> by implication, they can get over it, which is not true. Again, another, another lie. Um, you know, Winston, what about his failure of foreign policy? What about his... Uh, uh, disruption of relations with our allies. What about his um, succumbing to the will of Vladimir Putin, his failure to negotiate uh, and um, engage in positive uh, foreign policy with Asia, with uh, North Korea, with uh, China, and so forth? Um, is, is that a factor in this election? He's good friends with, with uh, dear leader Kim Jong-un and with Vladimir Putin. Let's not forget. So yeah. There's been some policy successes there. Uh, you, you know, like everything else, this administration has just been a wrecking ball on everything that we have uh, built up over the last, I mean, since the war, the, the World War II, honestly, uh, as far as policies designed to protect Americans, uh, the, the New Deal, I mean, frankly, is, is up for grabs at this point. Do Franklin Delano Roosevelt's plan to secure the safety and well-being of Americans is up for grabs. All of this has been happening behind the scenes. You talk about information overload like Tim does, and you talk, ask, uh, uh, Cynthia, uh, is this going to make a difference? We are so overwhelmed by the outrage of the day. We There's not enough space in our brain to contain all of these things unless you see it in a list. And sometimes you get a clever person that puts the list there that says, these are all of the things that, that this administration has done. And you see that and you're like, whoa, I for yeah. And every one of them sparks like this. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But after a while, there's just not enough space in the brain, but um, it's coming out in dribs and drabs. You know, I saw that uh, Ruli Giuliani's daughter came out uh, and saying, please vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. She says, I, you know, I've led a life of privilege and it was in, it was in Vanity Fair that came out. Um, you know, the Postal Service agrees, they were forced to say that they're gonna put back their machines by a federal order. Now, when and where are they gonna salvage them from the junkyard, I don't know. Um, there's a really good Lincoln Project thing that talks, that shows all of uh, Donald Trump's then opponents who now are his sycophants saying, he's insane, he's a lunatic, he's, he's, he's a con man. Uh, you know, from Ted Cruz or Lindsey Graham or Nikki Haley, uh, it's, it's very telling. So go to the Lincoln Project and find out. You know, it's, it's, uh, and then we have the, the attack on science that doesn't help us at all. But again, it comes back to what can we do locally? 
I was heartened to see that in a civil beat article today, 83% of people in Oahu wearing their masks, something like 77% said we needed the shutdown. It's it, the pain was there, but it was important to have that. Now that we're opening up, it's uh, it's scary because is it really that hard to administer? Well, tests? you know, yesterday I saw there was a, an article about how 41 states had uh, spikes. This morning I looked, there was an article that said 44 sp states had spikes. Um, out of 50, my God, uh, it's getting worse every day. Europe uh, is also, this country's, at, and, and Europe too. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's spiking all over the place. And I think that there, as this complacency wears on, and, and you talk about uh, the, the wars of war, uh, you know, we've got a war on a virus here. Um, but there's some, there is some uh, research that shows, I saw in People Magazine said, the CDC says small household gatherings are one of the main drivers of this increase in spikes. So stay home, folks. It's, 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 it's not rocket science. I thought uh, Anthony Fauci coming out and saying, his kids are staying wherever they live. They're not doing Thanksgiving. They're doing remote well, Thanksgiving. But that's the, that's the, the part thing. of the chaos now. You have different people making different advice to the public. And, well, you uh, got to go with science in this case as best as you can. But I thought one interesting piece was that uh, pneumonia vaccines seem to have some protective effect on people. So if you haven't gotten your, your uh, pneumonia vaccines, including the HIV as in boy, uh, that was a, a new one that came out in Washington Post. Uh, today it said, uh, I'm sorry, not Washington Post, in um, Discover, uh, and it's discovermagazine.com. It came out on October 14th. It says uh, pneumonia vaccines may reduce deaths from COVID-19. So there's some yeah. protective effect that yeah, they you don't know. You mentioned that. Well, yeah, Tim, I, I want to ask you about, you know, with a thing that is also dwelling on my mind, and that is the shenanigans. You know, we, uh, we, we, we talked about the, um, you know, the, the phony uh, ballot boxes in California, um, we, we were going to talk about um, Michigan and uh, uh, the attempt of the skinheads to uh, kidnap the governor. There are other attacks on the governor, too, on social media, by the way. She's been a regular victim on social media. And then Virginia, another conspiracy uh, to uh, kidnap the governor there. Um, and, and, you know, uh, my own theory is this is going to increase. It probably is happening in other places, maybe in other ways. And the FBI, um, the uh, Homeland Security, which doesn't seem nearly as effective as we might like, um, doesn't really have control over this. And as we get closer to the election, there'll be more. And so my question to you is, uh, you know, despite who votes for who, or should that be who votes for whom, um, you know, and all the campaigning and the talk about who's the better candidate and who stepped in something and who didn't. Uh, you know, bottom line is our system is in jeopardy. It's already been undermined. Public confidence is at a low ebb. Yes, they're voting, but their confidence is at a low ebb about whether their ballot will be cast, will be counted, and whether the guy across the street, whether his ballot, and the guy across the country, his ballot. So my question to you is, you know, how do you feel about this? Because there's really two parts to the problem. One is that people should vote right. At the base, you know, should, should have a revelation. Um, but the other part is that whatever whoever people vote for, the system of voting is in great jeopardy. The system of counting is in great jeopardy. Our constitution, if you didn't hear it before, I'm telling you now, is in great jeopardy. What are your thoughts about that? Um, the circus continues and it'll continue to November the 3rd and it'll continue for probably two weeks after November 3rd. But I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit more um, at ease because I think the, the gears of government are working behind the scenes. I am really very pleased to see that the FBI was on this proposed conspiracy to kidnap the Michigan governor back in June. This didn't just, uh, was suddenly discovered. They were working the case back in June. And I think that's a prime example of, of you know, the dedicated men and women that want to keep this country safe and keep its population safe. And they're, and they're working tirelessly to do that. And I think, it, be it uh, the FBI working for, on conspiracy cases or the uh, secretaries of state in many, many, many states, they're, they're dedicated to their mission. And I don't think it's being over-influenced by the, the bombast of Donald Trump. I think they're dedicated and they're going to do their job. 
uh, although we get these, you know, these uh, shiny objects in news reports uh, indicating otherwise, I do believe that um, deep down the system is working and working quietly. Well, I don't think Trump is going to accept the loss. Um, and, and, you know, we have many people speaking out on that possibility right now. Uh, later on today, we have a show with uh, Admiral uh, Zakumpf, used to be the commandant of the Coast Guard. He retired a year, year and a half ago. Uh, he joined um, 500 other high-ranking military officers uh, to express his, his concern about Trump and to say that he was not supporting Trump, not supporting, uh, you know, support, he, that he was supporting Biden, uh, that he had concerns about um, the leadership in the White House right now. So I guess my question for you, Cynthia, is um, you know, wh what is going to happen? You have, you have the possibility that Trump will surround himself with those in uniform, those with, with guns, um, and say that the whole election was a hoax, uh, it was rigged, and he is still the president. I mean, we talk about how we can protect ourselves from the virus. We talk about who we should vote for. But what do we do then? There's not a lot we can do, unfortunately. But I think we all need to plan for it because I believe it's going to happen. He told us about it even, what, a year and a half, maybe two years ago when he told us all that he had the tough people were on his side, all the bikers and the military and the cops and everybody, they're all on his side, right? So he point blank told us we don't, have any way to stop him with any of it because all the tough people are on his side. And I think that's still the case when you see some of these, um, I guess you call them campaign rallies where the Trumpers get in their cars and the big flags and they drive all around the place. I'm not quite sure what to call that. It's not a protest. They, I guess it's a campaign rally without the campaigner. I don't really know. But we see that more and more and more. We even see it here in Hawaii, which scared me some. I saw um, somebody with a Trump flag right here in the EA and had a big Boogaloo Boy flag right along next to it. And I thought here in Hawaii, oh no, this is dangerous that we have them here in Hawaii too. Yeah, well, uh, Winston, uh, I I'm sure you have some optimistic comforting thought to give us on that. <laughs> uh, not about the Boogaloo Boys, QAnon conspiracy theorists. But I think that what will happen is it will be okay. There's going to be a lot of shenanigans. Just plan on it, folks. Don't buy into it. Sanity will prevail. This country was built on a hope and a dream of, of people for something better. It is incumbent upon every single generation that, uh, that we look at ourselves, that we see where we're going, what we're doing, that we correct course Right now, we got off course a big way, and we've got a big correction to make, but it's going to require that we look at deep inside of ourselves and make the right choices for all Americans. Oh, well, wait, wait, so wait. You, so, you know, we, we had the thing in Michigan and Virginia. Um, let me just hypothetically say that uh, we could have, as Cynthia suggests, we could have just a handful, just a handful of Second Amendment people here in, in Hawaii who decide they're going to... They're gonna, um, you know, kidnap Governor Ige, for better or worse, they're going to kidnap him. They're going to take him away. They don't. They don't like what he's done on reopening or not reopening or whatever it is they're complaining about. Um, now, what are you going to do about that? They have guns, and and that's the problem. The Second Amendment is important to all of us because it means that the people who have the guns can control the streets. They can control the power, uh, and and if you don't like it, this pretty much nothing you can do because they can shoot at you we're not in a we're not in a situation where we're have we're not yemen uh if we have rule of law and we still abide by rule of law and so that's not going anywhere so if there something happens so that's not going nothing, anywhere we've been losing rule of law for for four years. We have been, but when you're talking about something of that magnitude, then we have entire structures that would uh, go into play. And hopefully people take their oath to the constitution of the United States very seriously. And I think that they do. And I think that will prevail over everything else when it okay, comes to Okay, well, what are you gonna do when they, you know, they take over your street with guns? 
What are you going to do when they kidnap somebody or do violence? What are you going to do? Are you going to do violence too? Well, you know, let's uh, let's hope we're not going there. We're going uh, that we're uh, we're not going there because we don't need to as a people. We need to say this is insane that we even have this conversation, and we need to pull back from from this and say enough. And we've been driven to this by one person. Uh, prim primarily, who's been stoking the flames of a lot of ignorance and hatred, and that needs to cease. We need to pour a lot of baking soda on everything and get back to common sense, decent American so, values. And I think that's what we're there. Going. It is. It's not Drano at all. It's not Drano. You heard it here on Think Tech. It's baking soda. Baking soda. Baking soda. Okay, Tim. We're almost out of time, but I, I would like to uh, know your thoughts about what is coming. Uh, what is coming and what is the word that you would like to leave with us today to remind us so we don't forget what you say because we have this kind of amnesia problem. Uh, so tell us what you think is coming and, and the word that will help us remember it. Okay, well, let me go to my words first and it's two words, hold steady. And what's coming is I think you're gonna see um, a lot of shenanigans about this debate that's gonna take place I think you're going to see a lot more uh, rallies that um, people are all appalled at because there's no mask wearing and he flaunts it and he's proud of it. And you're just going to see a lot more absurd comments and statements. And uh, as Winston said, you know, just expect it and uh, don't get sucked in by it. All right. Winston, let's go to you. I say that because I want Cynthia to have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> Winston, what do you think is going to happen next week or two? And what is the word by which we should remember your, your view of it? Oh, boy. It's, you know, every week is so amazingly different. Uh, we just have to say, of course, we have to think about what, it, what is best for my nation, what's best for me. Fundamentally, when we look inside, am I better off? Are we all better off than we were four years ago? The answer is clear hold in our hearts a higher vision for all of us and uh you know and uh, pray and move your feet go out and vote talk to people that may be on the line uh and and do what you need to do because that's all you can do uh don't contribute to things and turn off the news like cynthia uh, says take a <laughs> news sabbatical so you can give yourself a mental break <laughs> All right. So I guess that would be mental break. A new right? Sabbath. No, I'm sorry. A new Sabbath. New Sabbath. Sabbath okay. might be a little long. <laughs> Waking up a year from now might be. <laughs> Rip Van Winkle. Okay, Cynthia, this is your big opportunity. Oh, gosh. Well, you know, I do say that you're supposed to take breaks. It's important. You know, there's a fine line between staying informed and staying sane. Um, but I think to not be prepared for violence in the streets is just being an ostrich and sticking your head into the sand. Because granted, it's the hopeful way to think and I want to hope for the best, but I'm a good Girl Scout and I wanna be prepared for the worst just in case. So I'm like stashing away cash in case the electrical grid goes down for some reason. And this isn't just from people in our own country, right? Taking advantage of this moment, but because we are at this moment of quasi civil warfare in the streets, we are at great risk to other countries coming at us. And I think it's important not to forget about that and to remember to be prepared for all of it because the more prepared we are for all of it, the better we will be able to face it. If we have to um, you know, shelter in place, not because of the virus, but because of the violence in the streets, be prepared for that. You know, Take your um, hurricane preparedness kit and sort of, you know, enhance it a little bit to include other things. And, and I think that's important to remember those things to be prepared, be prepared. Can I offer you guys my thought on the same question? <clears throat> I think in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have surprises. I've already said that. That's, that's really clear. <clears throat> but some of them will be surprises that we can't, they're true surprises. And there'll be things happening under the hood where they emerge suddenly as a surprise. And so as far as think tech and us guys, uh, we're concerned, um, we have to, we, we, have, we should not be hypnotized. We should not be subject to the, the news cycle shiny objects, especially from Trump and his friends. Uh, we should be, we, we three, we four, um, one, two, three, four, five, we five, 
<clears throat> we should be looking under the hood. We should be connecting the dots under the hood. We should be looking for those changes. Maybe, just maybe, we will be pleasantly surprised. Winston first, of course. But we should, you know, we should we should connect the dots at all times and not be distracted. And so my my word is hood. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim Apicella. Thank you, Cynthia Sinclair. Thank you, Winston Welsh. We'll see you next Wednesday for Trump Week. Aloha. Uh -huh.